Welcome to the Common Man Football Show. My name is James Coburn, and today's episode, we're doing a <clears throat> listener request uh, from Quentin Mann. Uh, he says, can you do Tampa's O-line? And yeah, we can do Tampa Bay's O-line. Uh, so uh, for those that aren't familiar with the work that I do, uh, I, for the last four years, uh, have been compiling, gathering every single NFL football data that you could think of. Uh, whether it's production, athleticism, uh, data, combined, you know, 40-yard dashes, all that kind of stuff. And uh, as I've gone on, I've taken that data, turned it into metrics so that I can compare player A to player B and also come to some conclusions. You know, does speed matter when it comes to long-term success in the NFL? Does explosiveness matter? Like, do these things matter because i think the biggest issue that kind of gets lost in the sauce when it comes to data and metrics in general um is people talk about how well a guy did in this particular metric but does it matter to long-term success you know does it really matter um, and i think that that's what we're going to try to unravel here you know that's what we're going to try to figure out that's the thing that we're going to uh look into uh, in terms of success is 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 does it really matter uh, when it comes to success um, at these different sort of things. So uh, for those that aren't very familiar with the work that I do, uh, the terms are going to be in the description. So if, if you're not familiar with the athleticism data I'm going to be talking about, you can go to the description and I pretty much will give sort of a term and a definition for that kind of stuff. Uh, and you can look at it there. Uh, and we're going to go through most of the offensive line, the starters, uh, the majority of the backups. Uh, the only backups I'm really not going to cover are just guys that uh, I don't have enough data on to really say either way about. Uh, but for the most part, we're going to get through everybody. We're going to get through the starters. We're going to get through some of the backups. And I think what surprised me the most about Tampa was they do have a lot of offensive linemen that have you know good athleticism. Uh, it's just for whatever reason, uh, it's not translating to the football field, which again comes back to the fact that uh, you have to take a holistic approach when it comes to draft evaluation. Uh, you shouldn't be just looking at athleticism data and saying that this is the reason why they're going to be successful. It plays a part in success. And I think that that's what I try to prove to people on a daily basis with these videos is that the data I'm talking about plays a part in success. It's a trait like any other trait, uh, you know, when it comes to success. So, um, you know, don't get, don't get it twisted. I mean, film is still a very important part of evaluation. Uh, and everything else in general. It's just that these are other things that also contribute to success. And they're things that a lot of times can help to solve questions and answers that people have about certain players because people don't, you know, when athleticism data says a player can't become an all pro player, people take offense to that. And I, I kind of think it shouldn't be offensive because it's just facts. Uh, but you, we'll get into all that kind of stuff. So uh, essentially, we'll get into most of the offensive line and all that kind of stuff. So let's begin. Uh, let's get into Tampa Bay's offensive line in terms of how they performed in terms of uh, analytics. So starting starting with Ali Marpet, um, he's by far one of the analytic stars, I guess, of the team. Uh, was a fairly highly touted uh, small school player who a lot of people said was drafted solely based on his athleticism. I kind of disagree with that. He had a very good pre-draft process, you know, did really well at the Senior Bowl uh, and all these other sort of events. Uh, but he did have really good athleticism. I mean, that's no denying. I mean, he had an 83.96 explosive lower body strength score, 95.95 speed score, and a 99.13 flexibility score. Uh, based on the data at the offensive guard position, he pretty much hit every single threshold indicative of a, uh, a multiple all-pro guard to multiple Pro Bowl guard. Uh, to starter guard and on top of that when you look at the averages at the guard position He pretty much is above the average scores of all pro pro bowl and starter guards um, so When you look at the threat the thresholds just so that you're familiar with this thresholds just basically means that this is the minimum score that a player who was an all pro type had at the position Whereas the averages are just what the average score is at the position, you know, so just to just so that you get that. Um, so not only does Ali Marpet hit the 
minimum thresholds for a special player. He's above average of what the averages are in terms of athleticism at the guard position at all extremes, all pro, pro bowl, and starter. So he's a very good athlete. I mean, that's the basic sort of thing to say about Ali Marpet in terms of that sort of uh, area of expertise. Then we get to uh, Caleb uh, Beninoch, which I'm probably saying that right, and I apologize if I am. I'm not very good with uh, names that are kind of like that. Uh, but Caleb, based on his data, he does have some, some issues. Um, he has a 58.02 explosive lower body strength score, uh, which hits at least the Pro Bowl threshold when it comes to uh, offensive tackles. Again, this is the bottom end threshold. This is the minimum score uh, for that particular metric. Uh, and then he had a really high speed score. He had a 96.08 speed score, which is probably the big thing a lot of people are excited about with him. But only had a 29.65 flexibility score. Uh, and it, there has never been a multiple Pro Bowl offensive tackle with a 29.65 uh, flexibility score. It's just never happened since 1999. He does fit well with the starters, though. Uh, you know, the minimum starter threshold is 7.55, 3.24, and 10.31 uh, in terms of explosiveness, speed, and flexibility. So he hits at least the starter minimum threshold. Uh, but doesn't quite hit uh, the minimum threshold when it comes to flexibility. Uh, and then when you actually look at the averages, this is kind of where he doesn't look so good. When you look at the averages of athleticism at the tackle position, it's not good. Um, he, you know, it, he, he doesn't, I mean, speed is the only thing that he really hits in a good area of stuff. Uh, but when you look at data from a holistic, again, a holistic perspective, meaning you're looking at all the facets of this player's athleticism, he's deficient in flexibility and he is somewhat deficient in explosiveness. And this isn't the best sort of situation to be in. You know, uh, when he goes up against highly touted at like really, really good athletes, like you go to Jordan Willis in the preseason game, you know, Jordan Willis beat him really badly in that game. Uh, and you look at Jordan Willis's profile, which you can go to the Cincinnati Bengals video. You could, you could of course, look at any of my tweets on the matter. I, I tweeted a decent amount about Jordan Willis as well and put some charts up there as well on my Twitter account. Um, and you could also look at an NFL draft. Like, there's lots of places to look. Jordan Willis on draftcobra.wordpress.com. Just type in Jordan Willis and you could pull up his profile. Uh, but Jordan Willis was a 90-plus percentile athlete in terms of every single athleticism trait. And it doesn't surprise me that Jordan Willis had fun with Caleb because you just look at his profile. He's not very flexible. Um, he's explosive, but not elite explosive. And the only thing that he had as that is uh, decent is speed. And speed is controversial at the offensive uh, line position. Uh, you know, like a lot of people kind of, oh, well, speed doesn't matter how often you see offensive linemen run 40 yards in a game and blah, 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 blah. I really think sp speed oftentimes is about relative speed. It's about, you know, a player's ability to get to the second level and, you know, hat on a hat and stuff like that. Uh, but in general, I do think it is a bit of a concern that Caleb has explosiveness and flexibility in particular that is that low, which I do think is going to factor into things in the future with him. So, um, you know, can he become a long-term starter for uh, Tampa Bay? Yes. I mean, I, I can't deny that. He does have at least the minimum thresholds for a long-term starter. He does have some above-average athleticism traits that he can work with. But if it's the Super Bowl and he's going up against an elite athlete, an, an elite pass rusher athlete, good things are not going to happen for a player like this. Um, so as much as he's had a good camp and there's been lots of buzz about him and, you know, there's been lots of stuff about him, uh, I, I'm not going to say it's because of the competition he's facing in camp because that would be kind of insulting, uh, to those players. But what I would say is I would be cautious about him in the future, uh, because as much as he may be having a good camp, I mean, there's tons of guys that have great camps and then end up just off the map in the NFL. Um, and I'm not going to say that that's going to happen to him per se. I'm just saying that you have to, you have to understand that this is a guy who athletically speaking, um, just 
doesn't have the minimum requirements for a special player. And, and then when you look at the averages at the position, it just gets kind of worse off for him. Um, so I, I think that this is the biggest uh, issue with him is that his deficiencies and flexibility and explosiveness to a certain extent, I think, are things that could bite him in the butt in the future uh, in terms of uh, his future performance on the football field. And then we get to another guy in Donovan Smith, uh, of course. Um, based on his data, he had a 98.48 explosive revised string score, 79.71 speed score, and 73.33. Uh, flexibility score uh, when you when you look at the averages just so because you already kind of looked at the thresholds with uh, Caleb but when you look at the averages at the position the only areas where Donovan Smith kind of lags behind is he kind of has more of a profile of a, of a long-term starter than a all-pro and pro bowl type because of his lack of flexibility um, you know he the average flexibility at all pro and pro bowl levels is much higher uh, than Donovan Smith and he is explosive you know he has a 98.48 explosive lower body string score he does have decent speed uh, but his flexibility is somewhat of a concern um, and I think that that is probably the only sort of issue uh, that he's had the only sort of I mean if I was really going to point to some issues with Donovan Smith it's flexibility you know um, and flexibility just really deals with the ability to maintain leverage you know the ability to get underneath another man's pads uh, eat more easily and you know redirect and drop your hips and um, I think with Donovan Smith's case that's the only sort of issue with his athleticism is that he is explosive uh, he does have decent speed it's just his flexibility overall is just not exactly where he needs to be when it comes to the averages at the position and then of course when you look at the bottom and thresholds he looks you know better um, he pretty much has pro bowl potential more so than all pro potential because of his speed score his speed score doesn't quite hit the all-pro threshold uh, when it comes to multiple all-pro offensive tackle types. Uh, and again, you can work with that flexibility score. Like, Donovan Smith does have some potential to become an above-average uh, offensive tackle uh, player. It's just that his, you know, he's just kind of a below average when it comes to the average flexibility when it comes to all-pro and pro bowl types, which I think is probably one of the areas that kind of... Uh, is hurting him a bit at the NFL level is flexibility because people don't realize how uh, underrated flexibility really is um, when it comes to the offensive tackle position because you know, the ability to maintain leverage and get underneath another man's pads um, is crucial. It's crucial to pass protection um, and uh, it, it very crucial pass protection. So I would say Donovan Smith has some potential, but he definitely, I would shoot more so for if he does continue to develop I think he could be more so a multiple Pro Bowl type than a multiple all pro type but at this point I do question him a little bit because of his flexibility not really hitting the averages at the uh, position when it comes to his overall profile then we get to another guy J.R. Sweezy uh, J.R. Sweezy of course was signed uh, and uh, he, you know from this yeah, he was basically acquired from the Seattle Seahawks uh, based on his athleticism data, he has a 97.85 explosive or by string score, 88.78 speed score, 96.43 flexibility score. Uh, as you can tell, he pretty much hits every single threshold you're looking for when it comes to above average offensive guard play. Uh, when you look at the averages at the guard position, he pretty much hits every single threshold when it comes to that as well. Um, so the Tampa Bay Buccaneers are, you know, they're doing some data work. Uh, I mean, they're doing some data uh, sort of stuff. Uh, it's just that the players haven't been matching up with, uh, you know, again, there's other variables involved, you know, is this player actually a good football player? You know, that is a question that I usually try to ask myself whenever I do data work. Uh, you know, if a guy hits every single number, let's put on the film and see if he's actually a good football player. So I'm not saying that J.R. Sweezy is not a good football player. I'm just saying that it looks like Tampa Bay is going after good. At, they are going after athletes at the offensive line position. I just think that they're missing that other key variable, which is, are they actually good football players? Can they develop them into, can they make these really good athletes into quality results on the football field? Um, and I think that's the bigger sort of, um, you know, conundrum. And maybe J.R. Sweezy could fix that, you know, we'll see. Um, but he definitely is a very good athlete and uh, kind of fits right in with like Ali Marpet to a certain extent in terms of athleticism. In fact, he's actually kind of a little bit better than Marpet in some areas, especially explosiveness. Um, so he's a good athlete overall. 
Then you go. Then you get to Joe Haley, course offensive center. Uh, based on his data, he had a 42.37 explosive lower body strength score, 55.40 speed score, and 69.52 uh, uh, flexibility score. Um, based on his data, he pretty much, you know, when you look at the average scores at the position, uh, he doesn't really hit the all pro thresholds. Uh, he doesn't really hit the Pro Bowl thresholds in terms of average explosiveness. Uh, you know, s starter even doesn't really hit that sort of area. Um, so I would say he probably could be a starter, maybe, kind of. You know, uh, his explosive, when you look at the actual thresholds versus the averages, he looks a little bit better. Um, you know, he kind of has some Pro Bowl potential based on his speed and flexibility and explosive lower body strength score based on the minimum thresholds at the center position. Uh, and even starter, you know. So I think Haley has some potential to become a long-term starter at the center position to pro bowler potentially uh to a certain extent he is below average when it comes to his uh, explosiveness but he does have good flexibility he does have good uh speed at the position uh but i you know but we'll see what happens uh, i don't think he's a bust or anything else like that I think he can become a long-term starter i think there is some pro bowl potential uh but at the same time i, I don't necessarily think he kind of is amazing either across the board in terms of his overall profile uh, and then we get to another guy in Josh Allen, um, who's kind of the opposite, which again, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers seem to be doing data, at least maybe they aren't, maybe they're just, you know, not doing it, but, you know, they get a guy in Josh Allen who has a 99.38 explosive or body strength score, 87.26 speed score, and 88.25 flexibility score. Um, he's significantly more athletic than Joe Haley, so, uh, you know, he has pretty much hits the uh, averages at, at in terms of uh, all pro pro bowl and starter uh, doesn't really hit the averages in terms of uh, flexibility uh, at that position um, or or starter and again the averages at, at all pro is you know it's the averages you know uh, for that position for the most part um, and when you look at the actual bottom and threshold sort of things you know it's kind of a set of things he looks more like a pro bowl athlete at the offensive center position than anything else but he is a good athlete overall i mean he's much more athletic than uh joe haley well does that mean that he's going to win the job over joe haley you know who knows um I, i'm just being honest like uh you know there have been guys who weren't the best athletes who ended up beating guys who were tremendous athletes so there are other variables involved um it's just that when you look at josh allen it does appear that tampa bay is trying to find athletes to play offensive line it's just they may not be having the most success finding good football players and then of course when you get to the last player i'll talk about is kevin Pamphile, which again reiterates the sort of theme that they have been trying to get really good offensive line athletes you know Pamphile um, has a 90.32 explosive or body strength score 96.34 speed score and 85.80 uh, flexibility score at the guard position where he's currently listed on Ireland's depth chart. If I'm wrong, let me know. But um, at least it appears that he's a guard on the depth chart as a backup. Uh, based on the guards, uh, he pretty much has, you know, pretty... He's he's in line with the pro bowlers uh, when it comes to his uh, athleticism traits and starters as well. Um, so... There's really not much else to say about Kevin Panfile. I'm not really going to throw in the thresholds because you already saw the thresholds in terms of the other uh, guys like Ali Marpet and stuff like that. So you can go back there and check that. Uh, but for the most part, Ali, you know, Kevin Panfile, I just wanted to throw this in just as another sort of reminder that Tampa Bay is trying to get good offensive line athletes. Um, you know, it's not for lack of trying as to why they've um, struggled as much as they've had to, uh, to find these guys. Um, so ultimately, what can we conclude about the Tampa Bay Buccaneers offensive line? Well, one thing is they are trying to get offensive athletes. Um, it's not for a lack of trying. It's very Seattle-like. You know, every time, uh, every time a offensive line athlete fails, people go, oh, well, look at Seattle. You know, they just went after athletes and look at where they are. Even though if you look at the Seattle Seahawks video I, I did on them, um, they actually are not as good as Tampa Bay when it comes to getting offensive line athletes. Uh, but, you know, they are trying to do stuff. Like, I legitimately, I mean, there was, you know, is it a coincidence that, 
they have as many high-end athletes as they do at the offensive line position? I don't think so. I think they actually have a legitimate um, sort of uh, something driving these decisions, if you will. Moneyball, whatever you want to call it. Um, so they are trying to get better at the position with analytics. Do I think that's a good thing? Sure, I think it's a good thing. Um, at the same time, as I try to remind you guys, this is one piece of the puzzle. You know, So uh, just because a guy is a great athlete doesn't mean that he's going to be a good football player. doesn't mean that he's going to be a good fit in that offense. doesn't mean that he's going to have a coaching staff around him to develop him into a very good football player as well. Uh, which is another sort of uh, variable to look at uh, when it comes to offensive line evaluation. However, as should be seen from all the data I just went over, to be a really good offensive lineman, uh, you, you need to have above average athleticism traits. You know, if you're talking about Pro Bowl, All Pro offensive linemen, they are all really good athletes. And it does look like Tampa Bay is it's taking a very concerted effort to put good offensive linemen around Jameis Winston. It hasn't really clicked as well as it should. Pass protection has been an issue. Like, you know, we could go on and on about the fact that they're not seeing the results in the football field that you would expect based on the types of athletes that they've been recruiting and they've been trying to do. Although this is somewhat of a different year uh, because they have so many new guys that are also really, you know, J.R. Sweezy's on this team now uh, when he wasn't in the past. Like, you know, and of course, Josh Allen, you know, was promoted uh, up a bit. You know, he was a guy that, you know, wasn't really active that much last year for the most part. Um, so it does look like they're trying to up the offense of athleticism. But don't take that as, oh, wow, Tampa Bay is going to be amazing this year. Who knows? You know, offensive line is as much about chemistry and coaching as it is about athleticism. But I do think they're on the right track. You know, that's like the best thing I can say. The only area of concern, realistically, is Caleb. Uh, again, because of that flexibility and that explosiveness. You know, that combination of flexibility and, and uh, inflexibility and explosiveness is not that great. Um, I've never seen a long-term starting offensive tackle with that athleticism profile. I just haven't seen it since 1999. Um, and I think that that is the only sort of legit concern is that if Caleb ends up being the starting right tackle uh, in, uh, in uh, 2017, that he's going to be a liability on the edge. You know, it's, that is just what's going to happen. You know, um, and I think it's going to kind of fly in the face of, you know, people are going to go, well, look, they got all these athletes and look, Caleb is doing bad. Or they might go, oh, Caleb ran a really fast 40, so, uh, you know, he ran a fast 40, so there you go. You can't judge the 40 uh, for offensive linemen, <laughs> um, which, as you can clearly see, the 40 isn't the only piece of evaluation when it comes to athleticism data. There are other factors. Explosive lower body strength is a factor. Speed is a factor as well. Flexibility is a factor. You need to look at all the data as it works together on the football field. And I think that Tampa Bay, again, I think Tampa Bay is is uh, is has a concerted effort to put good offensive line athletes around Jameis. Will that result in improvements in the offensive line? Will the pass protection be so much better this year because of that? Will the run blocking be really, really good because of this? I can't really say yes or no. Um, you know, that's a different question to ask because uh, that, you know, that deals with uh, stuff that's, you know, higher than my pay grade, so to speak, um, you know, in terms of uh, offensive line evaluation, you know. So all I can say they're on the right track. They are trying to do stuff to put a really good offensive lineman around Jameis. It's just that they haven't quite been putting the best, most refined um, football players around him. You know, the other variables that I have yet to discover and find, if you will, uh, you know, we don't know how well these guys do with those other variables. But what we do know is they at least are putting somewhat of an effort in getting good offensive line athletes and putting them around GMs, and we'll see what happens. Um, so again, uh, my name is James Coburn. Uh, you can find my work at draftcoburn.wordpress.com. You can also follow me on Twitter at Geometrics. And if you like this content and you want more content like this, be sure to leave a like and subscribe. Uh, share this video as well with anybody that you know, and I will talk to you guys in the next video. Peace.